Hi everyone, my name is King IV, and this is a custom ACL workshop on the directory command. So the directory command is super useful, super helpful. I use it a lot for importing mass amounts of files that are in the same same format but in different files uh, that I need to and then import into one document or import all at once without having manually import it. So in this case, what I have here is I have all these Excel files that essentially contain the same information just for different months. I don't want to do five separate imports. I just want to do set up some code so that whether it's five files or 5,000 files, it's going to be able to import it correctly. So here I'm going to leverage the directory command. So the directory asks you what's the, the file path. So in this case, I'm going to leverage the fact that ACL knows where, where the project is. So here I'm going to go data one, which is in the same folder as my project. I'm going to put star here, which basically means it's going to look for any file. You can also make it star XLS if you want as well. In this case, I'm just going to leave it this. Uh, and then I'm going to call it two. I'm going to call it to a table called directory one. I'm going to open up directory one so we can take a look at what that looks like. So you'll see here, now it has all this data, including the file name, the size, the creation date, the modified date, et cetera, et cetera. And then here, I'm going to actually I'm going to go import one of the data sets here. Go import April. Nothing. This data set's not too complicated. It's pretty small, uh, but it is important. So here I'm going to call it April Directory One, and then I'm essentially going to import this data. So I'm going to leave it like this, and then what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to loop use the, the do while loop to loop through this data so I can import them all at once. So I'm going to say vmax equals to count one. And count one, if you haven't checked out my my understanding or applying variables, definitely check that out and it'll help you better understand what that does. So here I'm going to make vcapture equal to one. I'm going to say do in this case import one while vcounter is less than or equal to vmax. I'm going to go here and I'm going to put my V counter is equal to V counter plus one. So it knows to go to the, to the next value. And then here I'm going to say open directory one. And, I, and I'm going to say locate record V counter. And I'm going to say V file path is equal to all trim file name, which is the name of the look here name of this first column and then here I'm going to say v file name and that's essentially going to be equal to if I take a look here it's really going to be equal to the after the slash here so I'm going to go split a v file path it's uh, this slash comma two which is going to be the second component and then as well I want it to not include this uh, excel extension so here I'm going to split it again this time based off of dot in this situation I want just the first segment. So I'm going to all trim that and now essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simplify my code here and I'm going to replace this entire file path with this variable name and you're going to see how powerful it's, this is going to be because it's going to allow us to import many documents at once that contain the same file format So let's take a look at that. Okay, so that's cool. That's interesting. So now I have imported all five documents using the same set of code. You can also take it to the next level if you, if you cho so choose to do so. And since if you've imported with the same cold code, it's gonna have the same format, which could be good or bad depending on uh, if some of your data is bigger. You can also force change it. So for example here, I can force change it to be 40 as an example for the amount just so that I don't lose any of the variables. So here I'm going to open directory one and then I'm going to extract it to uh, extract fields all to in this case I'm going to call it import directory one 
And then the challenge will be, how do I know whether or not I need to append it? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a field called vAppend. I'm going to make it blank if vCounter is equal to 1, which means that it's the first record. Leave it blank. And vAppend equals to append if vCounter does not equal 1. So when I place it here, vAppend, it will either be blank when it's this first record, which is what I want. I want it to create and save over that table or append where it's going to, it's not going to save over table and going to append it to the bottom. So if we do that, perfect. Now we have all this data here and you could do things such as, for example, percent sign V file name put that in quotation as source and then afterwards you can come back and do summarization on uh, we should open up import directory one and then here you can go source subtotal amount to import directory one sum pre-sort open. Okay, yep, I also have to normalize these file names. So this is, uh, the problem is here is that each of the file names are different lengths, so it was throwing that off. So now it should work. There you go. So for example, if I were to go with this data and just copy this data and call it June, for example, and copy the date again, call it July. Instead of having to re-import this data, or if it's a brand new set of data, I don't need to change my code at all. It'll just go and incorporate the, that additional data. Obviously, if there's some constraints and whatnot, you can take a look, but you can see here the, really the power of using this directory command over just your standard imports when your files are normalized. So the challenge is, is that sometimes your, your data is like this, or sometimes your data is like this, where they're all in separate folders. So how do you get around that challenge? So let's, uh, let's create a copy of this script, and then I'm going to zoom here. And essentially, we're going to change this to directory2, open up directory2, and then we'll take a look at what that looks like. So here, the problem is, is it only contains the data in the first level folder. So how do I actually get the data in these subfolders? So that's a good question. So essentially what we're going to do here, all we have to do is add subdirectory, and then it's going to look for all the files in the subfolders as well. You can see here, right? Even, yeah. Uh, and then as well, if I just wanted, I'm just going to close this. If I just wanted the Excel documents, all you have to do is put it here, put this extension here. It's going to have just the Excel documents, and then I can apply a very similar format to my other loops. So that way, even if your data is separated into separate folders, uh, you can still take advantage of the directory command, which is going to save you a ton of time, a ton of effort, so you can really focus on the hardcore, more intensive, more value-add analysis. No one's going to reward you for importing data correctly, even though that's a necessity but people are gonna reward you if you spend less time doing that and spend more time creating value add activities. So if you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.